welcome BC <laughs> WrestlePod fan tonight to the Just Three Gents BC WrestlePod uh, show here as we review AEW Dynamite. We have the three gents in the room. Mikey is here. The Professor is here. JVL is here. And at least one of us has slept more than four hours. So we Which are, one of us has slept more than four hours? They'll have to figure Was that out. Me? I want to know in the comments who slept more than four hours. <laughs> However... We are excited to be here for you because we are at the Go Home Dynamite, not only for Revolution coming up this weekend, but the Go Home Dynamite for the career of Sting. This is an epic thing to be uh, viewing, and gentlemen, we had a lot to go over in this respect. But before we do, get the housekeeping out of the way. As you know, PC WrestlePod, the Biconics Wrestling Podcast, we review everything. We go through every Fed except New Japan. So every day of the week, we have something new coming out. Please subscribe to the channel, hit that alert button so that you can make sure you know when those are coming out and can be the first to comment on them, like them, subscribe to the channel in that way. We love the engagement. Also, we're on all types of social media at BC WrestlePod. And you can find us on Twitch when we do our live watch alongs, which will be coming up for Revolution this weekend, as well as a couple of things. So uh, any pretty much big pay-per-view, you'll probably see us there. And of course, our other big piece of news, get your date books out now because we're all old and have date books. But May 18th, we are going to be live and in person down at New Jersey WrestleCon. Most of our Biconics boys from the East Coast and maybe one or two special guests from the West Coast may be joining us to go see all of our favorites there. So come say hi, say you love the channel, tell us why you're not commenting, and we'll get to see you there. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Please come to New Jersey WrestleCon to tell us why you're not leaving comments on our videos. Exactly. That's the whole reason. <laughs> Fly to the armpit of America to let us know why you're not commenting on our videos. I really want to go. That's the day of graduation out here, I think. So I might have to choose between priorities. students yeah, and Professor New priorities, Jersey. we get it. All the P's. We're going to move on, though, from the P's to the actual piece of crap that we watched on this one. I'm not saying piece of crap. Right? It was <laughs> what it was. But we jump into Dynamite straight out. Adam Page hobbles his way to the ring to address the injury that we all saw last week and supposedly was ruined by online actual worry about an actual performer. This has been the weirdest thing in everything because they wanted to set up this injury storyline for wherever it was and real life got in the way where, where people actually cared about Adam Page enough to be like, are you okay? Please tell me you're okay. We love you. And Jerry Lynn got upset. So what did you think of this promo? I was so confused. I, I and I and I know I missed a week, and I was trying to catch up, and I was hearing things, and I try to ignore the internet because it's better for you, um, which is probably why no one leaves comments on our videos. But I I don't. I was so long. I like I I knew that there was this kayfabe break kind of going into it, but I didn't lean on it too much. I was like, all right, show me something. So it came out injured. I was like, oh okay. But for anyone who's ever seen someone on crutches, I don't know if Adam Page has used crutches before. He didn't know how they worked <laughs> or how to even sell, look at me, I've hurt my ankle. He just kind of moved around with it. So I was like, he's doing a really bad meh job on broken ankle hurt Adam Page. I was like, okay. Um, I think he was in his head a little bit if I was going to go full acting teacher on it because he was giving the promo knowing he was lying. And if you're playing the end of a scene, I know that I'm lying to you. It felt really flat to me, which I was really neutral anyway. Like I was just sort of, I don't know what this is going to be. And I was willing to buy into, all right, what could this be? But by the end, I was like, that, that did not land how it should have. Mikey, uh, there was there was a couple of good zingers in this one as well, back and forth. Once Swerve and Samoa Joe had gotten in there. Did you enjoy uh, Swerve bringing up Poncho Joe on commentary at, the, at some point? <laughs> I had a good cackle. It was fantastic. I love that we're bringing the memes into the argument. It's a lot of fun for sure. But so maybe someone can in the comments or maybe you two can clarify this. What was Hangman's plan besides, you know, I mean, he obviously he wanted to hit Swerve and he ended up hitting Swerve. But what was the grand scheme of this whole thing, faking an injury and whatnot? I'm just like, this is the weakest fake out in wrestling that I have seen within the last, in like recent memory. I'm like, this is the weakest fake out. Well, let me ask you, though, that would have worked better had the fervor online worrying about an actual injury and now again, AEW being bitten by the injury bug, would have it maybe have landed better for him that way because it seemed like for me he had to not only play up what they were originally going to do which was setting this whole angle up but also now since everyone knows this is a work i've got to get through the promo itself to the point they know i'm going to break kayfabe 
So, like, you know, you're working against seven different tides at this point. Maybe, and I, I'm sure you've been in these improv scenes, John. I equate it to, like, each performer thinking they know how to fix it, but then jumping on each other to try and fix it, and it just keeps going farther, 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 right? Oh, yeah. The whole dog. I don't, yeah, exactly. It's like, I don't think they knew how to dig themselves out of it. And, and what sucks is they're all really good at this. All three of them individually, really good at what they do. I'm wondering why this kind of unraveled the way it did, if there was some meddling in there or decisions were made that were strange. The fact that, I don't know, what was that? Just a few months ago, three months ago, they were drinking each other's blood. And now well, it's, and that, I hit you with the crutch. Boom. Well, that was oh, brought no. up though. It, the crutch happened after bring, Swerve bringing up, actually setting up uh, Hangman's family and like doing that whole promo on them. Mikey, uh, also, th- this at least like hit all the the, the uh, bullet points it needed to do for the for the feud, right? It was bringing together what it needed to do. Did it though? Did it? Oh, interesting. Me... I feel like the last two weeks, whoever was in charge of writing this, I feel like got cold feet on the original plan and tried to switch it up a little bit to be a little bit different. But then because you know the internet was actually worried and actually was concerned and not you know trying to roast people online like the internet tends to be half the time anyways then you know it's like the surprise was gone it's like just kidding i'm actually not hurt you guys but let me get through this promo real quick i feel that if you cut this little portion out and you still had what we've been getting just them throwing jabs at each other and then wanting to hit each other half the time I felt that would have been more effective. This one could have done with a little bit of a behind, a li- little bit of a trail off, a little bit of some denouement. Some, uh, some follow up with Renee words. backstage, some, anything. Yeah. yeah, Renee, who looked great. Um, I almost think, and this is this is going to sound awful, and I shouldn't say it like this. If you just come out with an ankle boot, right? Yeah. And just ma- and been like, hey, everyone, I'm still going to compete, but I got to wear this boot when I go. Maybe we all would have bought it a little bit, right? Split the difference some and be like, oh, okay, he's going to compete wearing the boot, even though we know he's kayfabe not injured, but he's going to play like he's injured, like we do with casts all the time, right? Like, go yeah. ahead. Well, do you do you now do that trope now? Is it a trope that every Adam in AEW has to come out in, in a walking boot because they've injured their ankle in a match? Like, it- <laughs> he's... Adam so-and-so, all elite, always wearing a boot, like, no exactly. matter what. <laughs> all booted, all I the think, time. Yeah, this just, just kind of fell flat. I'm not sure where we're going, and I I, I'm sh- I don't think any of them are kind of happy with how no. that go-home promo went. Well, and it fell flat, and then the next promo right after it fell flat is we have the Jacksons arriving uh, and talking about how they're fl- a meeting with Ric Flair, which seemed out of the blue, and again, Rush storyline, I guess, went great. Can I ask an honest question to both of you? Uh, John, you have been missing a couple weeks here, but um, have they had different facial hair every week? I'm yeah, they've been doing sure. the, the Robin Hood Men in Tights mall thing. Like, right. it's just kind of but a different choice. Like, like, last time it was just like like soul patches and like flavor savers. This week was full goatee. Like, how fast does their hair grow? I don't I mean, they, they might have ridiculous hair growth power, but if know. they had that power, they should just go full angry beard and, and love it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm not. I, I, I still think they're struggling with how are we going to do this EVP thing. Yes, they're kind of finding a rhythm, but every now and then they take a few steps back to sort of how do we deliver this and who's who's the ornery run, who's the straight character, who's the one that sells this fine or this thing. Yeah. Um, Renee has always kind of held up their promo, which is you know rough. I think I think they're getting their bearings still. But now we're almost three months into this gag, and it's still not quite hitting, I think, the way they want it to. Uh, they need to get through that uh, the Revolution match, and then they'll probably have a little bit better idea of what to do. Mikey, I sure. think you were not in your hand at this as well, just seeing them kind of set the tone for the night, but also in a weird way. How do I put this nicely? Don't. <laughs> just, just don't. Just be Spicy Mikey. Spicy Chorizo Mikey. We haven't seen Spicy Chorizo so Mikey. So the three-act structure that we got throughout the night that involved our EVPs leading into... The best way I could describe how I felt with this three-act structure outside of what we get later towards the very end of the show, which was a very cool visual from Stinger himself, I felt like I was watching... Like, if you took the found footage... If you take the found footage-ness of the Blair Witch Project and you combined it with, like, 
mm, let's say a kid playing Fortnite. I looked like I was watching gameplay of some really B grade like video game. It's like, well, hello streamers, let me play this game. I was like, I this whole three act structure felt like it's something that belonged in you know AEW Fight Forever. Like, ooh, ooh. Spoiler! I there. went there. Fight Forever season pass three. It really was. It, it, it was not worthwhile for most of it other than to set up the final image at the end, which honestly they could have done as the match itself. Kind of like what we had next because we had, I'm calling this the waste of time match. This was BCC, John Moxley, Claudio and Brian versus FTR and Eddie Kingston. And this was the, we're going to go through two commercial breaks. We're going to do a lot of rest holds. And then at the end, everyone's going to fire up on their finishers and do a bunch of hard hitting stuff. But honestly, from my notes on this thing, the first 20 minutes of this match was the lightest and easiest hits these guys have ever given each other. And almost to say, don't get hurt before our match at Revolution, but we still need to fill the card. That's kind of what I was going to say. It was sort of, we have this go-home show. We booked it. We're in Alabama. We still got to give them something. And, and, and they didn't half ass it at all, but they were very safe and measured. You're right. The first half of this was sort of, let's not get hurt. Uh... However, somewhere around that Daniel Bryan flying knee off the apron, that's when they sort of went, all right, if we're going to do this, let's do this. And then they started hitting each other exceptionally hard second oh, yeah. half of the match. I'm not sure if that was what they were picking up on from the audience or someone got in their ear and went, hey, guys, take it up a notch. Um, there was, uh, I kind of love Dax going for four pinfalls in 60 seconds. Only to have each one just thrown. Like, what are you doing? What are we doing? Uh, I didn't hate that. There was some solid. After that, there were some solid chops. Like Eddie always throws some some crazy things in there. But uh, I think you're right. I wrote that down too. Like this seems very. Let's just kind of wait for it. Uh, there was a funny. I I haven't. I had not seen a triangle sleeper. That's the first time I've seen that. I don't know if Daniel Bryan's been using that for forever or what. But I was like, oh, that's kind of cool that that slipped in there. Can I, uh, in that vein of also triangle sleeper, like uh, rules of three, did anyone notice that like Claudio and Brian were doing the moves in order they should have been and Mox was backwards? Oh, like, yeah. What was they that? had the two sleepers and Mox that. is doing the am- anvil elbows and then it switched to him doing a sleeper and the other two doing the elbows. And then they realized, oh, we're supposed to be in sync with this. Same with the corner <laughs> punches that didn't work. Like it just seemed again, it seemed like they weren't paying attention or just. And not then they reversed that later, and then they did the three-person turnbuckle chop thing, right? Let's all right. do the three, and then we flip it. So, which which I wrote down, Cash screwed up on, on Moxley. <laughs> he was also off. So th- those two were just like either two moves ahead, or were just like re- not remembered where they were supposed to be. I don't know what that speaks to. That speaks to let's do this thing, let's this thing, and then we'll switch it, then we'll repeat it. Let's do this thing, and we'll switch. so it's kind of easy to follow if it was formulaic. Apparently dare not. I say? Maybe Moxley and Cash are just left-handed, and so they're doing everything backwards. It's oh, kind son of, of a bitch. That's what that would be. Yeah, they're just going the other direction. <laughs> Mikey's laughing along with us. I love it. <laughs> Mikey hated everything about this, didn't you? I actually kind of did from a storytelling <laughs> perspective. And here's why. So, because this is your go home show, and we have a semblance of what the whole entire card for Revolution is going to look like on Sunday, right? Lest you forget, guys, there's a pay per view Sunday. You need to be giving these final moments and sell me on why I should be watching this pay per view. That sounds really bad because it sounds like I'm going to be a business person. But you need to make me invested to make me waste three or four hours, maybe sometimes five of my life to watch this pay-per-view. And you, I was really excited separately. I'm excited for FTR, BCC, and Eddie defending the Continental Championship against Danielson. There's two big problems with this whole entire match that kind of derailed this whole entire thing. Number one, you had a clinical classic last week between FTR and BCC. And you could have just kept them separate for this week, but no, because you want to give Alabama something to remember by because you didn't do it with anything else on this card, unfortunately. (laughs) Minus the women's match, which I'll have a gripe with because how come we only got one women's match and that was the only thing we saw any semblance of women on this show, by the way? I have a bone to pick with you, Tony Connor, but we're going to... We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yes, but two problems. Number one... FTR and BCC had an amazing match last week. Number two, 
I forgot that Eddie and Brian had a match at Revolution because they've been gone wrestling everywhere else but AEW for the last couple of weeks. I wanted more from this. You're literally giving me all six of these men in separate matches on Revolution. You loaded the chamber and you blew the load way too early. Been on that date. All the confetti uh, is yeah. all over the place before the matches have even happened at Revolution. Are we talking about the same thing? We are. Okay. Because we're trying to stay away from what's coming up next, which was <laughs> another kind of blown opportunity, so to speak. Uh, as <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm not allowed to speak on this because no. I haven't, you know, because there's a certain, you know, nobody, dis, you know, discern agreement <laughs> that got put in place. Oh, NDA about something yep. happening with the next person, Chris Jericho, the Lionheart. Uh, Get this man off my television screen. Why was this from? Uh, I, I'm tell you why this was here, but I'm going to let JVL get us through no, this thing. No, no, no. Go ahead, Mikey. We're already into this. Go for it. I'm going to get into this because also, lest we forget, we have a pay-per-view for AEW, but we also have a special crossover show that apparently, unless you're subscribed to CMLL's like YouTube channel where you can watch it, because BCC, all four members, including Wheeler Yuta, who is still out on injury, but somehow he's going to wrestle this match, is fighting some of the CMLL wrestlers that have been making appearances over the last couple of weeks. Which they and now this can't is reciprocate after what happened yes. today. Oh my gosh. There's a whole thing, like, if you can go back and watch some of the news today, I can't go into detail about it, uh, but the basis is all the CMLL wrestlers that were working in AEW, their visas got revoked by the U.S. government and now <laughs> cannot work in the U.S., so all of this build and everything they've been doing now cannot be paid off on American TV until they can get new visas set up because of a petty dispute between a local Texas promoter and CMLL. So it's a whole big thing. Go look that up later. But that's why this was such a big deal to have Jericho actually get a match in before <laughs> Atlantis Jr. and Atlantis's <laughs> visas Senior. ran out, basically. That's the sad part is. But here's the thing. I have enjoyed the CMLL, you know, folks being here on AEW because normally we don't get to see them. But Tony Khan, you got a pay-per-view to build for. And I feel like to use D&D &D logic here, like the CMLL matches that we got with everyone, you know, that was the side quest because we lost the plot of the main storyline that we were supposed to tell. And look, I know... Jericho has stock in the company, I guess, if you will. But I feel that this was the wrong person to be your spokesperson, to be the bridge, to kind of be like, don't forget, we're going to have some AEW folks in CMLL. Let's have this match. I'll be like, no. Mm -mm. It's also a half-assed story, right? I'm going to I'm gonna fight the son of the man I came up with because I want to teach him something. The end. Like, that's a horrible reason to have a match. Let alone the fact that you can't work a match that long by yourself. And... But that's when we get to that match, we'll talk about that. And and that's yeah. I was kind they, of they, alluding to that too. It's like that was a terrible hmm. anyway. They tried they on. tried to set up a heartwarming story. It didn't really pay off. No. The next part though was another heartwarming promo. We had Will Ospreay in a green tracksuit come out and yes. put a babyface promo. This, and he, he, he just he walked out of the squid games, you guys. <laughs> he sold me on why it was, he sold me what's going on, and his acting when the Don Callis family came out was actually on point for it where you could see him like do the whole thing of like I'm here I'm not happy with you all but I'm I'm faking I'm happy yeah I had no problem with this I thought this was fine yeah uh, I think Don Don Callis kind of tripped up the words he was going to say a few oh. times so kind of got stuck in what am I talking about and like wasn't sure what was happening uh, Will Ospreay was great in this I had no problem with this uh, I I like Babyface Osprey, it's kind of obvious where we're going, so we'll see if, if he fixes in or, or the family does betray Will or how this really goes. Uh, I, ju I just want more Will Osprey. The, the, the downside is his backup is not there to back him up, really, as they would have had in the story, which is yeah. having also Kyle dealing Fletcher, with visa issues. <laughs> also dealing with visa issues, but still. It's like the American hmm, government doesn't knows? want it's... foreigners to work in this country. Tony, Tony Khan's a billionaire. Hire someone to do that for them. What I blame the system doing? more than the people in charge of you're you know, and AEW. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely but, right. And as we discussed, for Kyle Fletcher's situation, yes, there was a clerical error. 
for the CMLL guys, this was a petty disc squabble. And again, I can't go into detail by a small time promoter who basically was sponsoring the CMLL guys to work in the US who pulled that sponsorship and screwed every, not just AEW. They were working in a couple other indie feds. TNA was having a few of them on. Like CMLL just got completely blackballed by this what guy. A, it was ridiculous. I got jerk. some news to share when we get off air because TNA is still going for the jugular with signings. Yes, they yeah. are. But we move on from. I, we're just going to go over this quickly. He's going to face Takeshita. There was that back and forth of them. It this seems is my like most anticipated match, you guys. Yeah, I'm not it's even going to lie. I'm very excited. That this one, this one might be the match of the night, and we can see it three days coming. I'm just like, worried. I'm like, Takeshi is going to lose, isn't he? Oh, man. But, but it's to Osprey, so it kind of makes sense. We then cut to backstage with Eddie Kingston, coming off the match with BCC. Cuts a heartfelt promo. Man knows how to cut a promo, uh, both out of breath and also out of energy. Does it really well. I mean, he got uh, messed up, too. That rope burn thing. And the nose pain. and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, he was messed up. Mikey? Nothing. I I was like, did we watch the same thing? Yeah. Because I have that same thing, but Eddie barely got anything out because then the EVPs interrupted him. That's true. That's true. They did interrupt him afterwards, but he got a little bit out there and he looked at, like he, as I said, he didn't need to do much. He sold. The I was going to say, I thought I was confused. I'm like, did I miss something? Like what heartfelt promo? He barely got like maybe two, three sentences out before getting interrupted. And then he promptly left. No, he, Eddie was so heartfelt. It felt like that. It might, even in my memory, I was like, I don't think he said very much, but I do remember him being heartfelt in there and present and everything else. And then got interrupted arbitrarily. Oh, he He's wanted like, to hit far. Nicholas Preferred, and Matthew yeah. so bad. He Preferred does not violation. like them. Does no. he not like them? You can see on his face that he hates everything that they're about. <laughs> I mean, Eddie Kingston kind of hates everyone, to be perfectly honest. That's his character. <laughs> but and I haven't heard any actual IRL beef he has with the Young Bucks, but... I wouldn't put you know, it past him at all. I wouldn't put it past him if he doesn't. <laughs> if he does. But then uh, again, we get this is the second part of this very fight forever storyline we got going on. It, it, it like, feels like, like at that point it's like no mercy on the N64 where it's like you just see the text blocks coming up underneath them like dress code violation. You've done this all there. Like That's really funny, actually. <laughs> boy. Well, let's get let's get out of backstage. Let's get out of the way of the sure. Jacksons. They're going to go and like have the worst pun in the world as they walk into the next one. But right now, we cut back to the <sighs> international championship being defended on TV as Orange Cassidy takes on Nick Wayne with the patriarchy on his side. And uh, did Nick Wayne learn how to sell? Because he was selling like amazingness for Orange Cassidy in this one. He was selling like hotcakes. It was crazy. I like and it was, it was nice to see Nick Wayne. I was like, I forgot you're a wrestler and not just a prop for, you know, the deadbeat dad society. Yeah, I, I, I've I missed Nick Wayne. I've wanted to see more from Nick Wayne. If, if I don't know when Nick Wayne first jumped into this fray. It might even be almost a year ago now, which that's crazy if that's true and time flies that way. Uh, yeah, it, wasn't, it was spring. It was spring. Jeez, it was spring February. when he was attacked by Swerve Worst. in his dad's uh, yeah, you know, yeah, wrestling. Yeah, yeah. So... I come a long way in the fact that it's like, hey, you're here, that frenetic energy, that madness, and hey, hone that, sell this, sell that. Um, and I, I thought putting him with someone like Orange Cassidy is brilliant because Orange Cassidy got him to slow down a little bit, even though, you know, we're selling for life, still buying these bits. And, and how do you do the psychology of this? And that was, yeah. I thought this match was really good. Uh, it was well put a together. A few spots in here. Did I write it down? No. No, because I, I watched it. You were uh, watching. Chris Cage watching. and everyone else getting ejected from ringside, which was just wonderful yeah. to watch. Uh, Nick Wayne had to hold his own. There was some crazy... Uh, it wasn't a dive. It was something Nick Wayne did, and Orange Cassidy caught him with his shoulder right at the end. Some, it was a flip, or I think it was a flip, or something wild like that, which I hadn't quite seen done that way before. It was going in almost into a Wayne's world and kind of reversed it and kind of that, yeah, so. Yes, yeah, that little bit right there. But I, that was all lots of fun. Like, I, this was a great match to watch. And it's then the not to mention, Yeah. Well, and before that, too, because we had a short interaction because Nick got distracted because we had Daniel Garcia... <laughs> Yeah. And Daddy Magic come out with all that whole bit. And then we get into the kingdom. JB, I'm going to let you go first because I have yeah. feelings. We knew this was going to be schmazzy all over, and we knew there right. was going to be something because the mind games have to continue until we get to Revolution. But the Undisputed Kingdom coming out to like 
take out Nick Wayne, but also take out Orange Cassidy, just like be there until Cassidy won and then attack him just to set up yeah. a bunch of other stuff. And I'm glad that we then had not only, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Trent Beretta and uh, Rocky Romero coming back from injury to help save him, but it was like, there was just, a, there was too many people involved. It felt like the, the trios match again. Just like, why are all these people here? Yeah. And, and sadly, this now we're in sort of go home show tropes, right? Look, everyone you'll see this weekend is here. Look at what's happening. And like, none of it was really earned. It just kind of happened. Sunday, Sunday, uh, Sunday. Yeah, make sure you see all these people. Roar. Like, okay, fine. Um, I'm happy Orange Cassidy has that title and is going to defend it and do some stuff with it. I think that's great. My takeaway was Nick Wayne. Like, look at the growth of Nick Wayne and what's going on. Nick Wayne is still 18 years old. Like, Nick Wayne is still a b -b -b baby. So I, I appreciated seeing him work with... I, I want to see them again, and I feel like we will. Yes. Because... Uh, as Mm, how do I articulate this and not sound like a dick? Sorry, I can't say that on YouTube. Sorry, you gotta edit that. Just be go. a tool. <laughs> uh, some of the more advanced, ridiculous things that Orange Cassidy does, Nick Wayne would not have been able to do a year ago or half a year ago. So Nick Wayne has obviously put the time in to work with someone like Orange Cassidy, who can do it all, but it's going to throw you that wild ass DDT, like some of these other things that he does, the pockets bit, like you got to catch me every time, or this is going to happen, some of the stuff. Um, he's great. I, I, I mean, Nick Wayne is, is I'm just he's, he's learning now. at the knee of pros and it's perfect right. and you can see it working. Well, and you can see Christian rubbing off on him. That's what I was trying to say too. It was like, the, <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't want to see that. Join the Patreon if you want to see. <laughs> Almost made it worse. Just stop. <laughs> you, you just yeah. No, stop we're gonna move on, Mikey. I want to know your thoughts on the having the kingdom there. Was this too much? Did we even need to showcase them at this point? While the Robert professor Trump? collects himself, so let me let me give my from little rubbing with Christian. Sense. Yes, we know. Let me give my nickel sense in here because. <laughs> so, <sighs> I'm gonna get in so much trouble for saying this, but <laughs> as this build has been going on and on since the announcement that Roddy and Orange this is literally the first match that got announced for Revolution if my memory serves six, me correct six weeks ahead of time yeah six weeks ahead of time and I was excited oh that's right it was the, I'll see you at Revolution <laughs> the in ring is always going to be fantastic and I you know I was stupid and I'm I'm upset with past Mikey because current right. Mikey is upset at past Mikey for being stupid and believing, oh, you know what? The build can be fun with this. This is just a personal thing. I'm going to get in trouble for this. I don't really care at this point, you know, at the time of this recording. They have kind of made me not interested in the build up, and therefore my interest in this match has kind of waned. waned. Not Nick waned. I was going to say waned. waned. <laughs> I'd rather be in Wayne's world, like, like, if they had got the absurdity of this build, I would have been here for it. And it's nothing against... Orange Cassidy has done everything correct, in my opinion, in this feud. He's been the fighting champion. He's been fighting everyone. Roddy, this is the second, like, major promotion you have been in. And we still don't know how to do a promo, sir? Like... Whoever has been booking these angles, I was like, can I be honest? Could we have to? I would rather have seen Roddy be taken out and have him go up against, like, I don't know, Matt. Honestly, give me a second match between him and Matt Taven for that title at Revolution. I'd rather see that because, Roderick, you are worse than watching paint dry at this point on my wall. This is. The build to this has been so blah and boring and just. Weren't y'all supposed to be like this big faction that was supposed to be a threat? I was just like, you're just as fierce as my morning cornflakes in the morning at this point. The Damn. Undisputed Kingdom is as fierce as my morning cornflakes, you Such guys. Such anger. Such visceral at, at anger corn. from you. At corn. I am upset from a writing perspective because this is lazy writing and lazy booking. You had me interested when Orange Cassidy fought Matt Taven and you know, Mike Bennett. But Roddy has been the third wheel in this whole entire thing. And he has been, just like I said about Danielson and Eddie Kingston's build, 
he has been so absent in this whole entire thing that Orange Cassidy versus a ghost would be a better match than what, and my interest would be more there than what we're gonna get at Revolution. Such anger. Did Christian Cage rub off on you too? My oh goodness. My gosh. No, we're gonna leave the rubbing of Christian Cage alone. We're not gonna talk about that rubbing anymore because we need to move on to a promo that did not need to be on the, it's the same sure. promo they cut every week, which is the Bang Bang Scissor Gang are staying backstage. They've won something yeah. together. Whoa. One of the guns has a good idea and then the acclaimed say it anyways and they get it put across and everyone's very happy about it. That's your promo. Yeah, why did we do Whoa. this again? Is there a reason that they keep no, just doing there's not, this? They're not even on the card for Revolution. <laughs> hey, we're still here. Okay, thanks. Bye. You like, thought Spicy no... Mikey was there. Mikey's about to get spicier right now. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. All right, taking down time codes. <laughs> I'm not going to take up a lot of time. No, I just meant for, for anything that comes out of your mouth. So we're just going to make sure. No, I'm a good person. I'm not going to curse on this. I don't want to make more work for my co hosts here. However, the whole purpose of this faction becoming a thing, I was like, y'all said you wanted to get back at the Undisputed Kingdom. Y'all have not interacted with them since the formation of sure. this. And just like always, we don't know what to do with the trios champions. We don't know what to do with the Ring of Honor six man tans. These are two of your biggest factions that the fans have organically loved and supported. How are you doing everyone involved in this faction dirtier? than my laundry half the time. Like, what is happening, you guys? So angry corn Especially with Jay White. Logan. You gave him the multiverse of madness in the MJF storyline with all this. It was a horrible build. You made him, be, you made Jay White, you know, get Max at every single turn. And then you made him to look like a loser at full gear when Super yep. Max, so Super MJF, LOL, I win happened. And then I was like, okay, you know what? <laughs> literally, that whole entire thing with MJF leading for the second half of the year, he literally turned into Super Cena, but the AEW version of it. Like, LOL, I win, and you run through the whole entire men's roster with no legit challengers. Sure. <sighs> yeah. I'm upset because the whole point of this faction coming together is they wanted to get revenge on the Undisputed Kingdom. And this could have been a really fun storyline. You could have had, all right, a revolution because, you know, Taven and Bennett aren't doing anything. You know, Meet Madness Madge is no longer happening because certain people are no longer, you know, clear to be there. So now it's an all-star scramble. Check out the predictions video later. We'll talk about how mad I am about that. But <laughs> we don't know what to do with this. And it makes me upset because these are like the two factions that the crowd is so over with, sure. especially the acclaim. How do you mess up the acclaim? And just just to prove a point here, Mikey's entire rant that's just gone on is longer than this promo was. Yeah. Because that's it's been the same thing is. across all the shows and I'm getting sick and tired of it. There we go. In a nutshell, that's what we've got yeah. there. It's it's not worth my case. Do something better with them. Move on from it because I want to. I want to move on. Do better because we come up to my match of the night. The only Same. women's segment we have on the night: Chris Statlander taking on Sky Blue with Julia Hart and Willow and Stokely at ringside. And you got a little bit of everything in this one, including a ring general calling a great match with a really game competitor. I thought this was wonderful. I thought the two of them worked well together and this really pulled off. Stokely with the chain was hysterical and yeah. costing Chris the match. So good. Okay, but like I want to say this is the second time we've seen Chris and Willow. Not Willow. Chris. <laughs> Honestly, though, Chris and Willow would be a fantastic match down the line. But Chris yeah. versus Sky. This is the second iteration we're getting at it. And, you know, they tussled before with Julia at Full Gear, which, by the way, doesn't get the love and appreciation that match deserves, by the way, because that match was baller. I'm still not over the things I heard while it was there. But anyways, <laughs> we know Look, we, we uh, discussed that at length in other planes. I understand. Uh, <laughs> but 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 having but, them do that there and also having Julia and Willow stare down and like uh -huh. working all angles of this. Yeah, I agree with you. There is a lot to enjoy that could be this pulled from was this. was a fantastic match. And Sky, I, Sky always looks pretty good in the ring, but I feel that. This was probably one of her better matches within the last couple of months. And 
I might say it. This was all right. I'm putting this on my list of some of my favorite matches from this month, and I'm going to revisit this for the year, too, because I'm like, this was not a pay-per-view match, but it could the have way been. that Chris it easily could have been. Easily could yeah, have been. Exactly. Been. Easily could So have good. Uh, also, can, can, can someone explain to me the difference between a Canadian Destroyer and a uh, Code Blue, which is I, basically the same move, except... I like, asked this at one point, and no one really had an answer. Is there an actual thing? There is, according to commentary during this match, because Sky Blue pulled off a Canadian Destroyer earlier, and then a Sky Blue to win it, so... And, and I was like, wait, what? Uh, Chris Strandlander just tossing Sky Blue like nothing? Just, ugh! Through her hell afar mm -hmm. into the like i'm trying to find it right now like that like the hang time on that was ridiculous the crowd enjoyed it immensely yeah just sort of i like they, they had time to watch her fly into the ground uh into so the that was awesome uh we had both ends of a picture in picture which always sucks because for some reason picture in picture is always when like i'm really intrigued and i want to watch this stop messing with me uh, I think this got the crowd back into it. I think every, the crowd was kind of meh after that six man, what the hell was that thing? Followed by, I don't know. Promo, promo, that? promo, promo, promo. 15 minutes of promos and commercials, which I'm sure a live audience could loved. give a damn about. They loved, they loved it. Yeah, I'm sure they adored it. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to know where we're going with the distraction thing and losing the certain Mikey's ways. got theories, Mikey's got theories. I... I don't want to say they've gone to the well too many times, but I, I'm at a point where I want to see a payoff or a decision or a something. Exactly. You know, I can I, happily uh, answer that question. I, I don't mind. I didn't mind Julia Hart there either. Uh, but yeah, that, that code blue thing at the end was woof. Mikey, fill in the gaps here for us. So here's where this is leading. So we're kind of stalling for time here with these four interacting because Scott, not Sky, Julia is currently dealing with some undisclosed injury that AEW has not made public yet. And so sure. she is cleared to kind of be doing like around the ring stuff, but she is yet to be cleared to do in ring stuff yet. Don't know the severity of the injury. So we're kind of stalling for time. My theory is going to be at some point, we're probably going to get a tag team match between Julia, Sky, Willow, and Chris again, which then I think turns into, if not another triple threat, a one on one, but this time Willow versus Julia for that title because Chris has already tried to go for it. She lost the title. Technically, still hasn't had a rematch for it quite yet, but I think it's going to turn into Willow versus Julia. Julia is probably going to. Julia is going to retain the title, and unless something happens, I can see it going into Chris versus Willow at some point, and then Julia and Sky go on to do other things. I'm still looking at you, Thunder Rosa. La Meta Meta needs to do something. Mm. Well, th there's enough permutations of this. I think they can get a lot of uh, storyline out of it and going through that circles of people. So they don't need to add Thunder Rosa in, but she's definitely in that kind of purview again i think which will be nice and th there's a no, couple of i'm saying that thunder well. should go after julia after this particular storyline is finished right let, let, says, the, let the torment sure. pull, like, pull her and serena deem need some feuds instead oh. of just washing people on the rock i hate when you're right because when it makes sense they're not going to do it and that that drives me nuts because what? you're absolutely right it gets people booked it gives you a reason to go this is why they don't hire me because i make too much sense <laughs> that's yeah. that's the exact reason that's all we have there but we are moving on from our match tonight. It was a wonderful match tonight, too. Again, picking up the third part of this uh, entire Fortnite scenario uh, where we're watching Fight Forever as uh, <laughs> Sting's gone a little batty in his dressing room as they invade uh, his dressing room and what find... What in the grindhouse was this? I see, <laughs> I see what you did there. Mm -hmm, yes. yes, yes. Discount Harley Quinn did, ran out of time to set up the party decorations because this was whack. I hated this imagery. And then I didn't hate it. I think they could have done it better. There no, was a I part of me that was so it. worried can... as we looked at Matthew Jackson in the mirror for so long, they were going to pull like a Hogan and uh, warrior <laughs> from WCW where all of a sudden Sting was going to be in the mirror. Mm. And I was like, no, no, like don't do that. Please don't. And they didn't, but then they hung on it too long. I don't know why they were just staring at it so long, but 
so a aw has this thing now where every single promo camera guy thinks they're a cinematographer like thinks they're gonna get some sort of cool emmy for these shots they pull and these wrestlers vice versa also think look at me i'm gonna do this cool acting thing and look at how great this shot was and sometimes it just comes off really tacky like not even close this whole great idea not the best uh uh what's the word execution execution thank you very much (laughs) it's just saying and i I didn't hate it i saw it was a trope because as a horror movie person and someone who's been in all those movies it's a trope that they could have done a little better. I think they they rushed it. Um, no. I think, no. No. <laughs> I think they had a good idea. But every time they do these horror movie things, if if I take you back to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre belt match. Please oh, don't. gosh. Please don't. Um, they just, please don't, please don't. Uh, they, they just try to do too much in a clunky, what the crap kind of way. Which so, is not endearing anymore four years in. I, oh, my point, God. It's your professional. not... Ugh. I hated this so much, and I'm gonna tell you real quickly why I hated this thing. Tell uh-huh. us, Mikey. Okay. <laughs> I am the of all the nine Biconics boys here. I am one of the few that is not in the world of theater. Fair. So, what? Take the, what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. I thought just the way that we set up the hanging bats and everything with the singular mirror. If you wanted to go very more symbolic of it, here's what I would have done. Scrap that whole entire, like, Harley Quinn loves Joker aesthetic we got going on with what we got. And here's what I would have done. Turn it into, like, you could have quickly turned it into a rage room where you had lots of broken mirrors, smashed up things. And if you really wanted to get into, you know, underneath the EVP skin, like, have, like, Obviously, you talked to them before, but take a couple of their sneakers and rip them to shreds. Have ripped sneakers hanging up around the thing because the young bucks are known to care so much about their shoes that they do. Have a bunch of stuff like that. Also, I wouldn't have used pink as the lighting color choice. Like Mikey, that, that. That was the indie horror thing to me. Yeah, right? it was, it was yeah. Like red, that's the red great screen. red lights. Let's hang them in there, and then on camera it's pink. <laughs> yeah, but, but but I mean, come on, come on. The one thing they did get right is, I mean, bats sleep upside down, so obviously that was yeah. No, good they, 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 did, they did their dramaturgy. Like exactly. they know how to yeah. get that right. Yeah. yeah, it's a bat cave. I wish they used something better <laughs> than <somewhere>. like, <laughs> because if you're gonna go for this cheap aesthetic. There are lots of different (laughs) ways. I'm all about the symbolic meaning. There was no symbolism here. No, it's literal. Pat sleep upside down. That was the literal. They got it right. Exactly. Both of you have been in the wrestling game longer than (laughs) I have. Therefore, I still have brain cells and have logic that I need to hold on to. Mikey's now like just projecting anger on us that he has the Young Bucks. It's wonderful. I was just came back from a couple weeks ago. I don't want to talk too too much about this promo, but they should (laughs) have, if they had those ripped bloody, those bloody suits from a few weeks back. Yeah. Now you've set the bar with blood on suits. You've done the American Psycho trope. Great, and now you just kind of dropped it into a lesser. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So John, I, I love your insight point. on this. You're, you're, it's so like it's just ingen- ingenuitive and very much like I don't know how you come up with this. It's very great that you can give those insights here, Mikey. I wish you could insight the well, well the professor on these tropes here. I don't know what's bad. Wrong. Sleep upside down. Exactly. Have you we're ever going seen from? A- we're going from you know moving on from one horror movie to another. Oh. Oh, you, and, and Mikey is now taking the transitions away, which is also good. Have you ever seen a fruit bat? A fruit bat is huge, <laughs> so they, they can't are. sleep upright. They, they really to... can't. Neither can Chris sleep. Jericho, which he should do because he thinks he's a vampire with his... No, this... He... I will say this. I mean, I he's a vampire of a different zombie. kind, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I enjoyed that sucks. I got to hear White Zombie coming out because the Lionheart's coming out there. It was great to have that intro stuff and not Judas, which was wonderful. Atlantis Jr., uh, he looked like Atlantis Sr., Basically, like, how long has he been wrestling? Because both of these guys seem like they were in their 40s or older and were having a bit of trouble moving around the ring. Uh, I felt like we were Atlantis because this whole match felt like I was watching it underwater. Like, this was so weirdly paced. <laughs> so it was moving slowly. And doing a monkey flip. 
And setting up another monkey flip. And oh, Jericho, you went up to the side. That's not a good landing. Oh, here's this an arm the, drag. Let me this check my phone and see if there's anything more interesting on it, Matt. This happened at another promotion and some stuff that they ran recently where the commentary was on script and was off on the moves that were going. So there was stuff that Taz and Excalibur were sort of saying because it was kind of being done in front of them, but not totally being done in front of them. And so, yeah, the monkey flip and something else. I was like, you just called the move and that hasn't happened yet. Oh, there it is. I can't remember what that was, but it was like, oh, you're just not quite. The corner uh, arm drag where Jericho got dumped on his head. Like, yes. there's like There was some, weird, but the whole reason to have this match was to, I'm going to teach him something. And the, you're, you're right. It's like, that's a 40 year old man <laughs> in there. He's got his, his tights up higher than his father. Like it's it's yeah. yeah. If you, and it, and is larger than his father. Walked out there like that's a grown adult. What are you going to teach him, Chris Jericho? Uh, How to sign an NDA? It did. <laughs> you sign someone else's name, and then you have ninety days to figure out what you're going to do. Uh, it, oh, it looked yeah. like Jericho that tossed into the steps. It looked like Atlantis Jr. ate it in the face, like was genuinely worried about his face. The camera cut away quickly, but I think he was like, is my nose still there? Right. Um, there were one or two other miscue things that were sort of, uh, and I don't want to say this because I don't want to sound mean, and we're going to bring this up later. But there were a few like old people things, for lack of a better term, where it was just sort of like, yeah, you can't do that anymore. That's going to hurt. You're pleased to uh, stop, don't just, burst it. Just, stop. just, just, just cal stop. calm yourself. Uh, Mikey's been should... eerily quiet for this. Like, I'm watching him, like, frustratedly looking down at his phone. Yeah, he's looking up bats on his phone because he doesn't believe us that they sleep upside down. No, I was just reenacting what I was doing during this whole entire match because. <laughs> Uh, let's see, my wordle hasn't been done today. Let me just fill that out, and then I'm going to do the crossword for a little oh, while. I was doing more important things, like... I, Were you grading papers? No, I wasn't grading papers. I was actually checking the news reports, and, you know... There was better things that... Like Maxine Waters, there's no way to reclaim my time from this match. I'm going to move on from this. Look, ever since everything that happened with Jericho from what we got before World's End even aired mere hours more has already soured me on someone I wasn't too fond of to begin with. Sure. And I don't want to be that person because, you know, I try. I want to be the optimistic one on this channel. But there's just certain, there's just times where I'm just like, if he yeah. goes away and, you know, the public kind of forgets about him, I'm not going to be upset about it. But I am not... A Putting my personal feelings aside of Chris Jericho's alleged behavior with when it comes to certain talent, his in-ring ability, he's kind of lost the plot of his in-ring ability for quite some time. And it's been very sad. And I'm on and I can't believe I'm gonna say this because I'm not too fond of the man. If he doesn't be very careful and he continues to go about the way with his ego not being checked, I'm afraid we're gonna end up with a Rick. Flair last match 2.0 oh, sure. where sure. I might watch Chris Jericho die on my television screen at some point. Well, I've, it's what he's going for. That or in a Judas concert. Who knows? <sighs> but uh, I also... The, the, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. It, it, it really was just... It was... And there was the, the kind of little heartfelt moment, the heartfelt moment at the end as Atlanta Senior throws in the towel. Then they all celebrate together. It, they tried. It didn't work well. There was their last gas for CMLL for a while. We'll see what happens. We cut around that to get back to talking about how meat, uh, the Meat Madness is going to be put on ice for a bit because obviously someone's injured. They haven't said who. I wonder if it also may have been someone from CMLL that was supposed to work with All Elite and could not. There's but, also uh, two people who they were going to put in that weren't cleared yet, and I know who they are. Exactly. Well, then would you like to expand upon that? Because now it's going to be an all-star scramble with a couple matches setting it up for the next two days. So... I don't know what Tony Khan was thinking, but according to Fightful and some other reports that I found, the you know this Meat Madness match was going to have Powerhouse Hobbs, Wardlow, Lance, Lance Archer. Archer, and also the re report was too was Mr. Keith Lee and Miro, who both are still out on injury still. Yeah, I think Keith really? now we yeah. changed this into an All Star Scramble match. And I'm looking at the field. I'm just sitting oh, here. I'm like, oh, meat madness. I get it. They basically took Big E's Sorry. premise and then <laughs> have run with it, basically, is what it is. I was but like, yeah, 
I'm an but idiot. Now, I'm looking for Meat Madness. Like, there's one called Meat Madness? I don't remember that on the... Oh. We'll talk more in depth during oh. the predictions video, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but now it's a <laughs> all, now it's an eight-way all-star scramble where the winner of that match is going to get a AEW world title shot, and I'm just sitting here, I'm like, do the rankings mean nothing again? Like, what happened? Yeah, they, they mean nothing in Wardlow's winning this, as we know, because he has to get that set up to win it. So If he it doesn't win, I might actually riot. I was just like, we just spent all this time for what? But we had that set up. Then we talked about the Liar Hangman page, which I loved on commentary. There was a great new persona he needs to have as the Liar Hangman page. Uh, and we get down to the final bit of this uh, evening. And, you know, it's Sting's last dynamite. Where is Sting been? What's happening here? The Jacksons come down. They walk around with their Harley Quinn bats. They look at all these people in Sting masks and like, oh, they're going to recreate the thing from TNA where he removed his mask and it's Sting and all that stuff. And the same thing from WCW. He did Psych. that too. Darby Allen's there to get his ass kicked for a while. Awesome. Great. Uh, you know, throwing around a bit. And then we get the worst part of the night. Oh, 80 year old Ric Flair hobbling his way out to the ring. Oh, yeah, I'm with the Bucks. No, you're going to betray them. You're going to do this. You want to work a bunch of stuff and still take bumps. He tries to. He throws a couple lame punches, gets the worst, you know, nut hit in the business to himself, falls over. We think he's going to have a heart attack that needed to be removed from this. Ric Flair needed to be gone. This was not needed because we then had nostalgia take over <laughs> as the Bucks go up to the top of the ramp. And I have to ask this honestly. I remember when Sting stopped doing this, when Sting stopped descending from the rafters, and it was after Owen Hart died. Mm -hmm. And he said specifically because the stunt was already too much anyways, and because of what happened to Owen, I can't in my right mind ever do this again. But now in his 60s, he's okay with taking that, that stunt again? Like, has it gotten any safer? No, well, probably not. I mean, they're the also, I just rewatched it. They're lowering him really super slowly, for sure. Yeah, it's an yeah. older guy. Yeah. He's harnessed a hundred different ways, and there's three people that run out to help him get out of the harness. It's true. So I'm not, I'm not, I still, there's still a part of me that's like, that's hella dangerous, and there's a precedent and a recall from some of us like, that's dangerous, don't do that sort of thing. Right. Um, but at the same time, the lizard brain us goes, Oh, Sting came down from the ceiling! Sting came down from the ceiling! Absolutely. I went full lizard brain. Like, it's happening! But then what took me away is that the camera shot was so far away. And again, they think they're cinematographers. They think that they were going to get this cool, here's, here's the Jacksons, and then this Sting falls in the distance, when really it was sort of like, we can barely see it, and we're not sure who that is. Oh, it's a man in a coat. It's Sting! Yeah, I think that worked. I think I agree with everything you said. I want to call something out because I think this was a botch. I think I think they removed the wrong person's mask. He did. He knocked he, it off the wrong person. Yeah. He pulled it off a fan and the fan just goes, uh, what? And then Darby walks up like, what, what, what? Me, 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 pick me. And then they do it again. <laughs> That's just what I saw. I thought that he messed it up. It could be right. It could be wrong. I agree with everything else you added to this. I think it might have just been staying. Hey, if it's my last dynamite, if it's the go home show, I want Rick there. I want this there. I want something. Calling that a shot. I wouldn't be surprised if Sting does it again. A little upset. Like, why are you doing this? Why are you taking this risk? But, I, but it might be that one last hurrah for the fans thing that's gotten under him save it for the pay-per-view then do it on the pay-per-view it doesn't need right do it at the pay-per-view and we all go okay cool now you have nowhere to go um and please leave, leave Ric Flair home at the retirement home he's, he's, Ric Flair's gonna be involved in that match and it's gonna be awkward and strange and hopefully he's not blading himself oh he will on the wrong part of his head and then he's gonna die of a heart attack what a way to go <laughs> I, part of me also wants to see <laughs> Mick Foley and The Undertaker and Bret Hart sitting front row, like, just disappointed. But not it's... Kevin Nash, because he won't be allowed to. Anyway, <laughs> Mikey, <laughs> we haven't heard your thoughts on this. I have to hear your thoughts on this. Sting has had a story career, period. Yes. The end. He needs Look, to now become I... stung. I... 
I'm saving my thoughts and feelings for Revolution 2 because I said this last week when it was me and you, JVL. I respect the hell out of Stink's career and the, you know, the various iterations that we got of the character. However, I am biting my tongue because of how big of a legend Sting is and how Sting means a lot to a lot of more oh, yeah. hard grown wrestling fans. Oh, yeah. I don't have that attachment, so I'm not going to say things and I'm not going to be slick with it because I'm going to get canceled as far as we can. I'm excited for the match at Revolution. I'm kind of excited to be a part of history here, being able to see, yeah. you know, an actual living legend that is going to retire in my lifetime. And I have to feel bad, you know, with the recent passings. I was like, I have no connection with these people. I know how important they are, but I didn't sure. get a chance to see all their stuff. Sting is a little bit different because even though I've only really paid attention to him and watched him consistently since he joined AEW, I'm going to be a part of that retirement. And, and and it'll be someone that hopefully will stay retired from the ring, unlike somebody Please. he's up there with. Unless he decides to inject those stem cells that everybody else has been doing. I hope he gets involved the same way. Sean and Triple H got involved. Like, get backstage, get with the talent, get with creative, sort of sort some of this stuff out. Um, AEW has had strange and what the hell are we doing plot lines and storylines for a while now. <laughs> what stings through lines have always been pretty consistent, and I'm well, wondering he's if that he's had ability to. He knows how to work himself and do that right. right so and and whereas and Christian does too. I mean, I agree with everything we've said about Christian. And I don't need him on my TV, and all that stuff needs to get sorted out. Yeah, rub him out. Yeah, just <laughs> you almost had me do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> my whole brain went, do it, do it, say the thing. But it's. Say what you want about Chris Jer Even when Chris Jericho's storylines go way off, he, he gets involved with creative and pulls it right back in in some sort of streamlined way. Beca and, you know, they're allowed to have that sort of freedom and they know where to go. Do we see Sting as, like, the first inductee in an AEW Hall of Fame? Ooh. Okay. I agree with The Undertaker and a few others that have talked about Hall of Fame in general. There is no Hall of Fame. It's a list until there is an actual place for people to go, like baseball, NBA, NFL, Hall of Fame, right? It's not a Hall of Fame, it's just here's a list of people and once a year we have a dinner. Like that's what it is. It's an award show, yeah. It's Yeah, it's, it's an award show and it's a nostalgia fest and oh, I almost said it again, but yeah, I have an opinion of award shows. If there was one, if Tony Khan went that direction, I, I think Sting gets on there. I think, I think Sting it's belongs first ballot for them. Yeah, yeah. I there needs to be a unified, prof a professional wrestling hall of fame so all wrestlers are recognized in a certain way by a third party. That's my opinion. That would never happen because they have iron grips on their own things. Um, but yeah, it, in any other sport, that's a hall of famer. 100%. Period. Well, gentlemen, we've come to the end of another dynamite. And the uh, the end of a career almost for some in some respects. Uh, I'd love to hear your final empanada rating for the final finality of Sting as he becomes stung. What'd you feel for tonight? Wasn't that Dana Carvey who made that joke about Sting the singer? He's not stinging and he's not stung. He's Sting. Tense. Ah, uh, this sad. This is ooh. this sad. This sad. Uh, I'm I'm living in the low sixes, and I'm taking a full point off for the lack of women. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is you know low five, high four, like four nine five straight, like not sh for a go home show. This is your go home show on Sting's last Dynamite, and you kind of mail it in. Yeah, you stunk, Mikey. I'm gonna give this a solid. Six out of ten for me. Really? Wow. Here's the thing. I wanted more from Sting's final dynamite. The man didn't even say much, which is darn shame. Again, I feel that we could have switched some things around because I felt like the promo he gave last week should have been here, and then I would have been hooked. Not even sure. in the ring, not dealing with the you know EVPs. 
but just being his authentic self and giving us the very philosophical what is life and the meaning of my more my own mortality promo that he cut sure. last week mm -hmm. i think that would have done way better than this and I mean, we got some more finite like things on the dynamite side for Revolution. But I again, I was telling JVL this before we started. I feel that we were missing two thirds of the rest of the AEW card in terms of for Revolution because. N and I'm just like, great, now I got to watch a Rampage and I got to watch Collision because <laughs> especially Collision is because that's where we're going to get our final sit down with Tony and Deanna. On collision, I was just like, "What happened? You didn't want to put them on dynamite, you guys, cowards!" Anyway. That's where oh, that. Mm. This was an afterthought. This was a yeah. full-on afterthought. And Mikey, I agree with you. I would have given it a six as well, probably after the last couple of weeks. AEW's been up there in the high sevens, almost to eights. This was a five for lack of women, even though the best match on the minute card was the women's match, and the amount of promos that did nothing, the amount of promos that went nowhere. This was a five for me overall. Yeah. Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure going over this with you, much more so than watching the actual episode. Yeah. <laughs> in general, remember to follow us on socials. Remember to, to jump in with us there. and We enjoy sharing this with you every week. Hopefully you'll come back and watch us do our live watch along of Revolution and our review of that as well. Mikey will again be joining everybody for every pay-per-view because Mikey never, ever leaves us alone. He is running this band and we love him for it. But as always, thank you for joining us here on the Just Three Gents podcast. And of course, remember, you're Biconic. We're all biconic together, and we'll see you in the next video. Ah. Is that what we're doing? Uh, are we she heard me week? booties. Oh, wait, wrong show. Wow, <laughs> wow. It, 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 it's not National Talk Like a Pirate Day, so I was close, but not really. What day is that? It's That's April, isn't it? <laughs> so no, it's funny. January. We missed it by a lot. Not even we, close. Yeah, I just missed it by that much.